Hi all, thanks for joining me with another KL Tech Videos. Today I'm going to kind of be a bit of a part two, uh, which is the advanced AdGuard uh, video. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy AdGuard encryption, not uh, upstream, so we're not talking DOH in the terms of the upstream servers, we're talking encryption from your laptop, your phone, to AdGuard itself. Um, some people will be saying, why do you want to do that? Um, people usually do that to expose the services. Um, personally, I don't recommend exposing AdGuard to the internet anyway. However, you can set this up to work on an internal domain. Um, and the question, and, and rather the answer I give to that question of why would you want to do this is, why wouldn't you? It's a simple matter of improving security across your network. You're encrypting DNS requests across the network so that if you were ever to get a malicious actor on the network, it's encrypted still. Um, why not? So we'll also be going into some DNS rewrites. Um, and I say, let's just get into it. Let's just have a go. Um, as always, we're going to be doing this on our Windows 11 professional server. Um, in this case, it'll be my uh, test server, not production. And I'm going to show you a few methods of also how to use Nginx Proxy Manager with an internal domain as well as an external domain. So it's kind of a mix between uh, AdGuard and Nginx Proxy Manager. A few little advanced tips that um, some amateurs and beginners might, might want to know. Um, so as you can see, we're looking at AdGuard's uh, home interface. Let's start with the, the encryption process. So to get uh, onto settings and encryption here, the, the, the basis of this is going to be we're going to need um, an SSL certificate. We can um, use the one that Nginx Proxy Manager provides, or we can also use Certify the Web, which is a program that we can download on Windows to generate SSL certificates. Um, and I'll show you both both methods. So starting with this, if you go to certifytheweb.com, all links are description uh, in my description below. All links will be in the description there. Follow through, mostly copy and paste job. So if we'll download this, certify the web. Okay, so that is open. Um, so basically, you're going to need to have a domain name. Uh, the domain name, um, I've got a couple set up um, here. I'm going to click New Certificate. We're going to go with Let's Encrypt. I'm going to pop in my email. And yes, I agree. Register contact. Okay, there we go. Um, and if we give the certificate a name, uh, KL Tech Offline, and we click save. The end. So KL Tech Videos Offline .net. Um, What we'll also do with this, by the way, is we'll put an asterisk at the beginning and then a dot which basically creates a wildcard, which means that any subdomains we create on this domain can be used with the same certificate. Um, okay, uh, and yes, we would like to add just the non-wildcard version as well, because AdGuard will require that. So we've got our, our wildcard one there and the standard one. For authorization, we're going to be using the DNS challenge. Um, okay, DYNU, you'd pick whatever you're using, enter some new credentials, um, which we're going to get from DYNU, these you won't be able to see obviously because they're unique to myself, but if you are on DYNU, these will be on your API credentials page. Credential name will just be KL Tech. And save. So we save that. Uh, and then we can run a test to make sure that everything is um, connecting correctly. Which you should do. Boom. There we go. Everything's running great which means uh, we can request the, the certificate. But before we do that, we're going to want a place to export the certificate. 
So we're going to create a deployment task, export certificate, um, and by the way, um, AdGuard is going to want the uh, full certificate chain, IPEM format, including the key. We're going to chuck that into our Docker stuff directory, um, which we all just created directory for certs. So that's familiar for you and your system. Um, backslash, and we'll just say AdGuard cert dot pem. Okay, save that and then request the certificate and we're done. And if we uh, look into our folder, we've got our AdGuard Ad cert there as well. So that's fine. Okay, now our certificate has been created in uh, Certify the Web. I'm also going to show you how to do that in Nginx Proxy Manager as well as create our proxy, our uh, domain um, for that. This and go to SSL certificates and we add SSL certificates and we use the DNS challenge again, uh, DYNU. Uh, this time we will use the API key instead of the client ID and secret. Pop that in here. Obviously, the domain name we're going to be uh, doing that on. We'll do the same thing again with the asterisk. Um, and then we'll do one without the asterisk as well. Without the wildcard. So if we do asterisk dot. Yeah, I think it'll let me do both in here. In the same field. Um... Yeah, it looks like it let me do both, which is great. Uh, we'll click save. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, built into this. If we go back to the dashboard, proxy hosts, um, and we enter our domain name for AdGuard. Don't make the same mistake I did. Click on it. Uh, we also put in there the IP address of the system. 444 is the port we're going to be using. Now, if we go to SSL, you will be able to see that it allows us to use both. Uh, and again, this is going to be our offline domain. So you'll notice that because we've used the DNS challenge, we've also not had to port forward anything. So at this point, we've exposed no services and we're not going to, to expose AdGuard anyway because that would be a major security breach. You don't want anyone having access to your DNS server, let alone other things on your network. Um, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to make sure we keep that internal. And if we do expose it, we're going to do it over a VPN. In Nginx Proxy Manager, under Edits, there's a few things we want to do. First of all, where it says Scheme, we're going to want to have that as HTTPS. And we also want to create a custom location. And the custom location is going to be forward slash DNS query. That is also going to be directed back to the system IP. And don't forget to remove the space because like an idiot, I put that in there and it's caused me all sorts of problems. On port 444. Um, and again, the scheme is going to be HTTPS. And we're going to click save. So essentially what we've done there, just to go over it one more time for you, is um, on our proxy host settings, we've enabled HTTPS as the scheme. So we'll hit save, and there's our proxy. Now if we go back to AdGuard Home, and we're on the encryption page, um, we're going to click Enable Encryption. Uh, we're going to change the HTTPS port to 444. The domain name we're going to put in is not the IP address. It's our domain name. Now again, you could have set some, you could have changed it, you could have modified it to be something like adguard dot domain whatever. Um, I'm just doing this setup basic, um, and we'll, we'll do that. We'll redirect HTTPS automatically. Yeah, why not? It's always a good thing. And here we come to the section of our certificates. So if we open our folder, open our folder in Docker stuff, the directory I've created. Go to certs. 
copy my certs and the path is going to be certs backslash and um, what do we call it we called it add guard cert dot pem add guard cert dot pem all copy paste the same thing in the one below and we'll see that it's uh, perfectly fine um don't you can disregard the warning at the bottom of validating certificate pay certificates has no ip addresses um there are ways of creating the ssl with ips in for our use case it's, it's just not required um so as soon as we've enabled all those options you've checked the box got our server name in there redirect change the port got our certificates we're going to click um save configuration before we press that we're going to middle mouse button out to filters dns rewrites middle mouse button that which opens the second page really important this is where we're going to create our dns rewrites which tell the system to send that domain back into our system so it doesn't reach for the internet for that so if we click add dns rewrite and we put our um domain name in there not the uh, address get with it okay so that's our domain name for adguard uh, and we're also going to put in the system's IP address. Basically, what that does is it tells the system that any time we go to klltechvideosoffline.dynu.net, redirect that back to the system, kind of like a loop address. If we didn't do this step, we wouldn't be able to access our AdGuard system again because it wouldn't point there. So we'll do that. There's a backspace there. Okay, that's why that came up. Um, so that's in the system. And second, we're going to do the same thing we just did, kind of. But we're going to put that asterisk at the beginning. Which then sends all subdomains to the system as well. IP address for the system. Make sure we take off that space that we didn't see at the beginning. Make sure there's no spaces there. Um, and then click save and then we've got both going there so by the way in a nutshell that's how you, you dns rewrite as well that's how we can start uh, telling certain uh, urls domains we, we can modify and point them into different areas um, and we'll, we'll do a little bit more of that in a minute because it is going back to the system ip address um, but we've got our dns rewrite so if we go back over to adguard's encryption page We've set everything up as we want. We're going to click save, which will now go, uh -uh, this page is no longer private. Why? Because it's detected that there is a HTTPS element to this. Um, so what we want to do now is go to our domain that we just created and rewritten. It comes straight to our ad guard. Now, if we go to the top left of the page there, you will see the connection is secure and the certificate is valid so we've got encryption um, now we need to log in with our credentials that we would anyway and we're in which is great stuff now some services may automatically connect to adguard now over https but not all such as windows so if we go down to the network settings here on windows and we go to Ethernet. Uh, and you may see that I've got an unencrypted manual DNS server. Because this is my test server, I've got my own proper ad guard on my production server as well. Um, but we can do something cool at this point. If we see the DNS over HTTPS and we click on automatic template, it will find our directory. However, in some instances, Windows 11 Pro, sometimes Windows 10, but on Windows 11, it doesn't always work straight away when you click save, as it doesn't in this case. The very fast workaround to that is where it says on automatic template, put on manual template. You have to do automatic first so that it picks up the address, but afterwards you can just default back to manual and then click save. And now you'll see that it works and you'll also see 
encrypted written in the settings. Now, you may be using a different reverse proxy. Um, if you are using Nginx uh, Proxy Manager, there is another little bit of the element. There is some sort of bug in the latest version of Nginx uh, Proxy Manager. So if we go to my Dockage instance, if you don't know what Dockage is, it's like Portainer. I've got a video for that as well, which I'll put in the description. Um, but if we look at the uh, Nginx Proxy Manager stack, if I click the edit button, if we go down the compose file, you will notice um, that I've created a volume in my documents folder here, which leads uh, the volume to a file, and it's, so it's mapped from file to file. And the file is empty, it's just something I created in Notepad++, which is that file. As you can see, the name is underscore hsts underscore map dot conf. It's completely blank. I've saved that in the directory on my Windows system, uh, in Docker stuff, in npm, right there. It's completely blank, there's nothing in it. And this appears to be a workaround, because without this, for some reason, in the latest version of Nginx Proxy Manager, which in my case, I've got it on uh, 2.10.4, but I do believe this is in 2.11 um, as well. The custom location which we need to pass the DNS query doesn't work for some reason. Um, I don't believe it's just limited to the uh, the AdGuard DNS query part. I think that's linked to a few other uh, location uh, custom locations as well. But if you find that your DNS queries are not coming through, um, or they're not connecting correctly on your um, encrypted domain, that would probably be the reason. Um, so if you go back to your compose file for Nginx Proxy Manager, and you just map this blank file, uh, and literally put not just the, the path, but the file name, and then inside on the Docker side, app templates, and the file name again, for some reason, it just miraculously works. I picked that up on a GitHub page, which I'll also link in the description below, in case you're facing issues like that as well. It just works. I'm not going to pretend to know why or how, but it does. So, effectively, we've set our AdGuard up, we've encrypted our AdGuard. I do have a video below if you want to go and install AdGuard using my guide. And we've encrypted AdGuard. Now, if you want to use this on your Android phone, for example, you can go and put it into the private uh, DNS um, on the connections page in your settings. Again, this is only going to work internally on your network, and that's assuming you're pointing all your devices like your router at your server that you have it on as well. So it's an important point to make. As soon as you leave the house, it will lose access to that because you're not, unless you're using WireGuard or something like that that keeps uh, the connection alive. But this is great uh, if you want a very basic um, encrypted connection within your local network, within the house. Um, and again, I've demonstrated to you there about the um, DNS rewrites feature under the filters uh, there. DNS features. And the cool thing about this uh, DNS rewrites, for example, is you can actually add another DNS right in here uh, and you can have something like um, my POE switch dot LAN and then you can literally have that connected to another IP address with your switches and you type that in and it will go to that switch. DNS rewrites are a real powerful feature. We've also shown you how to use uh, Certify the Web to generate your SSL certificates. Um, and I've shown you an Nginx Proxy Manager how to get those SSL certificates as well. So I think we've covered pretty much all bases there um, for a basic overhaul. Uh, and also not to put spaces at the beginning of your IP addresses because obviously, as you can tell, it causes a few issues. So that's for our offline domain. Now for the online domain, pretty much the same process. The difference is you will have port forwarded on your router, port 443, to the system that hits Nginx Proxy Manager, and that will then expose that uh, the URL to the outside world. Our offline version can always remain offline if we're not pointing that. If I show you back on the um, page, see, so my KL videos online will have my public facing IP address. You won't see it, but it is in that IP4 box. Where it, whereas, on my offline dynu.net, the IP4 address is blank, and that means that it will it won't hit anything. So if we go, for example, to uh, ping, let's try it with Google. 
google.com, you can see that it is pinging the IP address right there, 2165.8.212. If we ping... this one but we say videos offline Do that thing off the beginning. it's coming back as our local IP address now if you were to put that into a website online to, to to get the IP address again it would come up with you can't there is not one there isn't one available but as you can see the top one from Google there is it's outside and our offline one is our KL Techno videos offline. If we do one better than that though, if we do ping and we do our online one, this one will come with our outside the IP address. Just to give you there you go, see, there's our outside IP address. So it separates everything out, and that's just what I was trying to convey and get across to you. So I think I've covered everything in the video that I wanted to cover. Um, there'll be more videos coming out soon about different things. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Like and subscribe.